Let's pretend for a moment that you're out running an errand and you receive a message that your 13-year-old son has been shot by the police. You rush to the hospital. You see your wife. She explains to you that the police have refused to allow her to be with him, even though he was just a few feet away, bleeding on the ground. All, you, you're in the hospital and you're waiting. He was, she, was not allowed, she explained that she was not allowed to be in the ambulance. However, he was surrounded by police the entire ride there after he was shot by one. They're wait, you're waiting in the, in the hospital and you, um, you're waiting in the hospital and you're waiting and you're pleading to see your son and, and they're not allowing you to see him. He dies. You are... You, have, you never had a chance to say goodbye. The story I'm telling is the story of Nicholas Hayward Sr. His son, 13-year-old Nicholas Hayward Jr., was killed 22 years ago. That's just the beginning. My project is the Force Trajectory Project. I've been utilizing photographs, um, photographs, film, photographs, film, illustration, and oral history to create an accurate portrayal of what happens when your loved one is killed by police. My question is, what is the impact of police violence on our communities? So here is what I've learned. Three to four people are killed by police per day in the United States, which equates to 1,100 to 1,400 people per year in this country, which is the largest um, out of any developed country. 51% of victims suffer from a mental illness, and 95% of victims that I've recorded uh, were unarmed. Less than 1% of those uh, less than 1% of, of these cases result in indictment, and less than 1% of those less than 1% result in a conviction. Families experience alienation, fragmentation uh, from their communities and their families, and their loved ones are criminalized in the media. There's absolutely no infrastructure of support, and police do not follow proper protocol in terms of communicating with the families. Uh, families experience police harassment, intimidation, corruption, and negligence. Uh, like Nicholas here, was arrested six times for uh, having his, not having his dog on a leash. Their trauma is completely untreated. So where am I with this now? Uh, I met with the Department of Health a few, weeks, a few months ago to discuss the creation of a trauma survey to assess the trauma experienced by these families. We are hoping that this can be the creation of the infrastructure of support that's needed for the families, such as burial funds, crisis funds, and health care. I'm hoping that my ongoing goal for this project is to create dialogue between uh, communities affected and not affected. Thank you so much.